Honor has been one of the kings of budget phones for a few years now, but Huawei's sub-brand is looking to join the ranks of kings of smartphone cameras with the View 20. While it sells for quite a bit more than the other truly budget-level phones from Honor, the View 20 competes with most flagships on every level, including the same processor from the Mate 20, tons of RAM and storage, a brand new display with a 24-megapixel punch hole camera up front, and a brand new generation 48-megapixel camera on back. That's an 8-megapixel resolution increase over both the Huawei P20 Pro and Mate 20 Pro, and being a new generation Sony sensor means it's got a slew of new tech alongside it like the TOF camera. Much like Oppo's latest flagship, the R17 Pro, Honor has outfitted the View 20 with a time-of-flight camera, which is a device that effectively measures depth information based on the speed of light. Honor is using this for more than Oppo does, including sticker emojis, counting food calories, body shaping, and 3D gaming. Most of these would be considered more along the lines of a phone's feature set rather than additions that affect camera quality, so we're going to cover most of those in the review of the phone itself instead of here. On the surface, it appears that it might have an even better hardware than the considerably more expensive Huawei Mate 20 Pro, but direct comparisons reveal why there's such a gulf in price between this device and that one. While the main camera is incredibly similar in every way, including specialty modes like night mode and portrait mode, it's the tertiary experiences that make up the difference. Here's what I mean. The Honor View 20 features only a main 48 megapixel Sony IMX586 sensor on the back, no secondary cameras for zooming in or getting wider angles. This main camera is a huge half inch sensor though, which is substantially larger than most other smartphone sensors. And while the physical 0.8 micron pixel size is tiny, Sony's quad bear array configuration means that this one can shoot 12 megapixel shots with an effective 1.6 micron virtual pixel size. That 12 megapixel setting is configured out of the box and generally delivers the best balance of detail and dynamic range, but you have two other options to choose from as well. Switching to the full 48 megapixel resolution will deliver absolutely mind-blowing detail in most lighting conditions, and even delivers essentially identical detail when compared to the considerably more expensive Huawei Mate 20 Pro. The full frame resolution brings a few disadvantages to the table though. Loss of dynamic range, no digital zooming in the viewfinder, and worse low light performance than that default 12 megapixel mode. To alleviate this, Honor has developed what it calls an AI Ultra Clarity 48 megapixel mode that works similarly to night mode, taking several shots over a period of a few seconds and then combining these shots for wider dynamic range and sometimes even enhanced detail. This is a really cool feature, and while the viewfinder reminds you that this mode will enhance well-lit scenes the best, they will still help lower-lit scenes from time to time as well. What's cool is that, unlike night mode, you won't see any blur introduced into the frame if you move it during the capturing process, and this includes objects that are moving in a scene like people, for instance. This particular shot shows an interesting effect on moving people that's similar to what Google Camera does. Just like on Huawei's top-end phones, changing from 12 megapixel mode to 48 megapixel mode disables digital zoom from the viewfinder, but while Huawei's phones straight up disable those additional cameras, there's no secondary camera to disable on the Honor View 20. As a matter of fact, you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference in most circumstances though, especially when it comes to detail, where the View 20 handily beats most other smartphones, even with telephoto lenses. Dynamic range is the weak point, again, due to the fact that this is essentially a crop of a 48 megapixel shot, and those individual pixels are super tiny, meaning they just can't pull in the same amount of light that others can in these types of shots. It also makes the question of choosing between the 12 or 48 megapixel setting quite a bit more difficult, as leaving it on 48 megapixels will always give you that full zoom ability, but will lessen the dynamic range. The slightly more expensive regular Mate 20 will give you the addition of a wide angle lens that also doubles as a super macro lens too, which of course is a big deal, but is it worth the extra cost? In pretty much every scenario, the Honor View 20 has better quality, and this is particularly true when using the 48 megapixel mode or trying to zoom into a subject. 
Even the front-facing camera is better on the Honor View 20 when compared to the Mate 20, and while it's really only better by a hair, it's still worth noting. The only advantage you'll see from a Mate 20 is of course that wide-angle lens, and it's difficult to say whether or not this is worth it for most folks. Yes, I would definitely have preferred to see a secondary wide-angle camera on the View 20, but the rest of the scenarios give it a quality advantage over that regular Mate 20, and that's something hard to pass up. Something the View 20 also does very well in particular is capturing moving objects without blurring them. This has been a strength of Huawei devices for a while, but the View 20 seems to be even better than before. Now these examples aren't one-to-one, -one, but they were taken in succession after one another and do show the difference between that Huawei Mate 20 and the Honor View 20 when it comes to capturing crisp photos while moving. The View 20 just wins every time. Moving on to some of those AI modes, that AI Photos toggle has been tuned since the last phone release and really does a nice job of enhancing photos. If you don't like the saturated look, it's a simple button press in the viewfinder to toggle it off, but if you do prefer the look, you'll be pleasantly surprised at how fast the dual NPU inside that Kirin 980 processor detects scenes, meaning you won't have to wait around for them to be identified. As has been the case with Huawei's latest flagships, the Honor View 20 has an incredible auto mode in low light, and represents the absolute best auto mode of any camera on the market. Simply stunning, bright imagery comes out of the camera, no matter how low the light, and you'll find that there are times where the auto mode actually captures a brighter scene than the night mode, all without adjusting any settings. This auto mode reproduces the most color accurate pictures in low lighting of any phone on the market, with only the Huawei Mate 20 Pro tying its prowess. It also takes a picture in just a fraction of a second, while night mode, of course, takes several long exposure shots over several seconds and can have a hand jitter introduced into the scene if you find yourself shaking a lot. As we covered in the night mode video published recently, auto mode won't produce the level of detail that night mode can, simply because that's not its goal. Auto mode is here to take a super bright picture in a split second, while night mode is designed to capture as much dynamic range and detail in a low light scene as possible. As is the case on Huawei phones, night mode has manual adjustment settings for ISO and shutter speed, meaning you can increase either setting to deliver a brighter picture in night mode, all without sacrificing detail when the phone is stabilized. Trying for longer exposures while holding the phone will always result in a brighter picture, but, as expected, will almost assuredly introduce hand jitter. The biggest difference between the Mate 20 Pro and the View 20 is in noise reduction, where Huawei takes a more aggressive approach, while Honor seems to side more with Google on letting a bit of noise in to preserve fine detail. Check out the gallery below, and of course that night mode video for all the samples we took. Manual, or pro mode as it's called in the viewfinder, is exactly what you'll find on the Mate 20, including the ultra high ISO options and super long 30 second shutter speeds. ISO can climb to as high as an astounding 102,400, which is second to none on the market, and represents some of the most versatile manual photography modes on the market. The only real major thing that's missing is focus peaking, which makes manual focusing nearly impossible to use without getting a slightly out of focus photo. There's no real pro or manual mode for video though, leaving only LG's flagships with such options for folks that want more manual control over their video experience. Portrait mode is generally good and does a solid job of edge detection, but is not as good as Google's. The View 20 does not feature that post-process adjustment features like Xiaomi does, meaning you'll have to make sure your settings are correct before taking the shot, as blur depth and type cannot be adjusted after taking the picture. Portrait mode is limited to being used on human faces only, and this seems to be because of the integration with the TOF camera, which can be used to sculpt body shape based on a 10-point slider. This adjusts the face by elongating or squishing it, and it seems like the middle setting produces the most desirable results. Aperture mode creates a more true-to-life DSLR bokeh-style effect than portrait mode does, and it will work on all objects, not just when it recognizes faces. This does a super excellent job of organically blurring the background in a gradual fashion and mimic a lens, and it even captures the effect well on moving objects, dramatizing a scene in a way portrait mode simply isn't intended to do. These effects are even carried over into video mode, where Huawei's AI color adjustments from the Mate 20 series have made their way here as well. Frame rate of the video capture and the accuracy, 
as a whole seems to be improved from the Mate 20, but those changes will likely make their way to the Mate 20 in a software update since this phone features an identical processor and dual NPU setup as those phones. Even that body sculpting effect can be used in video mode, showing the true power of Huawei's dual NPU solution inside the Kirin 980 processor. Just like the Mate 20 family, the View 20 can only record in 4K at up to 30 frames a second. It also has identical super slow motion quality as the Mate 20 series, providing 960 frames per second super slow motion recording at 720p quality. The software continues to be improved on this front though and now only takes about 3 or 4 seconds to save the video versus double this time on last year's Huawei P20 Pro. The biggest setback in video is a lack of telephoto camera on the View 20, which is incredibly obvious when placing it next to any phone that has a telephoto lens. Even the cheaper Xiaomi Mi Mix 3 does a considerably better job of zoom detail in video than the View 20, and Huawei's Mate 20 or P20 series absolutely blows it out of the water, but are of course more expensive devices. Honor has put together what could arguably be called the best camera experience on the market when it comes to providing incredible quality at a true value. Honor has once again shown that a good experience is not one that has to cost an arm and a leg, but cost savings also means that some things had to make the cut. Ultimately though, the core experience is as good as you'll find right now, and it's only a few areas where the View 20 falls shy of the mark, while excelling wildly at the vast, vast majority of every other benchmark we set. We hope you enjoyed that camera review and will subscribe to us for regularly updated content. Chat with us on your favorite social media network, and don't forget to check out AndroidHeadlines.com for 24-7 worldwide tech news coverage. Thanks for watching, and until next time.